Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Just uh, another interesting little video, this one. Um, this is a very old Dell Dimension. It's an E520 uh, and it's got a Pentium uh, Duo 2.8 gigahertz. Um, and what I'm gonna try and do with this one is see whether or not I can put a Xeon chip uh, into the uh, the motherboard. Now, this may or may not work. There's a, there's a chance that it may not work because the way that um, the uh, the actual motherboard on here may not be compatible with the uh, the Xeon chip yet. Certainly, the chip itself um, runs at a faster clock rate than currently this chip is working on at the moment. Um, plus, you also need um, a little bit more um, in the way of, of uh, sorting things out. So you you uh, you need to actually um, use these little devices, uh, which are used to jump across some of the connections underneath the actual chip itself. And this helps you uh, essentially power it in the right way. Um, the Xeon chip is this one here. So here's my little Xeon chip. Um, and it's uh, um, model number, if I can read it, um, probably can't at the moment, but um, I think it's the uh, 5458, um, which I think is probably the most compatible uh, with this. But um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm, I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit so you can actually see um, what um, is on the screen. Let me just bring that up so you can actually read what's on the screen itself. So there you go. And you can see now the, uh, the actual processor that is actually running on it and the setup. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dismantle uh, the, uh, the, the actual computer. Right, let's first take a look inside. Um, so the memory is down in here. Um, we've got four gig in the system. This is the heat sink. Uh, the heat sink needs to be taken off. There are some screws in and around um, the, uh, the heat sink itself. So I'll detach that. We'll then take a look at the processor area. We'll look at also what the modification I have to do to allow the, uh, the new um, Xenon chip to actually uh, go into the socket. And then from there, we'll check to see whether or not it even tries to boot up. Heat sink has now been removed. So let's uh, take a closer look at the, uh, the area inside the processor. So there's the thermal paste on the processor itself. And so this is the, the lock. There's quite a bit of fluff in here. So before I put it all in, um, we've also got the, uh, the old heat sink here and you can see the paste. So I need to clean all that down. I need to clean the paste on this one. Uh, to unlatch the processor, I'm just gonna press release mechanism and then flip up the lid. And then as you can see here, there are some key endpoints at the top and bottom, which permit the, uh, the processor itself to lock into this particular uh, part of the circuit board. So I'm, I'm gonna use a little knife uh, to try and gently persuade those clips to, uh, to break away or at least uh, wear down. Uh, this will take a bit of a while. Um, I'm gonna be very careful not to damage the processor. I mean, it's sacrificial, this computer anyway, but I, I wanna see if I can actually try this um, and, uh, and, and make a good job of it without uh, damaging anything um, as far as the, uh, uh, the processor is concerned. So um, again, you'll see the next section will be when I've actually cut these little bits out. Right, so um, I've taken out the two joints that was, uh, would actually key in for the, uh, the processor that was currently in the device. And um, just using a, a Stanley knife, so I was using Stanley knife like this. And what I was able then to do was to, uh, to cut the, um, the little projectors that were out here and here. I think they're done now. Um, from what I can tell, they look as though that they've uh, been removed. And I just briefly vacuumed around it just to make sure there wasn't anything inside there. So now what I need to do is move on to um, uh, going to the Xeon chip and actually then doing the modification to the Xeon chip itself. Right, so the um, mod has been added. So you can see there's the arrow in the corner. There's a little plastic um, switchover. So this is the little switchover device here. Um, I use some needle nose pliers as well uh, to help me uh, just get that in place. Now I'm gonna put the magnifying glass over the top and see if I can get a, a slightly better image for you. Probably not. You can see there that I think I've just about covered the holes correctly. 
It's tricky to do, um, but uh, I'll now place it in the, uh, in the motherboard and see what happens. Right, so there it is. It's uh, seated in. Looks to be okay. Uh, let's put the cover over the top. So the cover goes over. Let's put the latching mechanism down. Um, now all I need to do is clean up the heatsink, uh, put some thermal paste back on it, and then the moment of truth will be starting it up and seeing if it's actually going to uh, pick up any, uh, any, any of the uh, processor and uh, if it will work, as I hope it might. Oh well, unfortunately uh, that did not work. Um, tried it a couple of times and uh, as you can see here we're back to the Pentium uh, dual core processor or Pentium Duo, whichever one it is, that's a Pentium D. Um, and um, the, the Xenon chip just, just would not uh, fire it. Basically the, the uh, Dell fired up and started working and um, it never went into post. So I can only assume that um, the, uh, the motherboard, as I suspected, probably isn't compatible to take uh, this uh, uh, Xeon um, Well, round two of this upgrade on this Dell, and uh, it's a Dimension E520. So the uh, processor went back in again because the processor that I tried to put inside it, which was this uh, Intel uh, Xeon chip. Uh, so this was the Xeon chip that uh, I tried to put in last time. Anyway, so what I've now done is I've got an, uh, a last generation of the dual core processors. So this is the, uh, the E, 5800. Uh, it's a Pentium class processor uh, and it was produced I think about in, uh, in 2010 and it's uh, probably a little bit of an upgrade on the, the current uh, uh, processor that's actually inside the board itself at the moment which is the Pentium D. So I'm hoping this will just be a drop-in replacement uh, and I'll be able to uh, chuck it in. Um, I know certainly from uh, fiddling into, the, uh, into the, the actual motherboard itself it should fit so let's release the bracket now. So a healthy blob of the thermal compound on there. Uh, it's not very tidy, but then I'm not so worried about uh, this, um, this setup on this computer really. Um, here's the underside of the, uh, the heat sink itself. So let me uh, wander around and actually uh, put this in place. So that just locks into these little guide pins here for the plastic and just pop it in over the top. And you can feel that the thermal paste is slid over the top of that. Uh, it's nice because it's fresh, so that will be good. And I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit on this side and then tighten it up on this side. Okay, moment of truth. So let me turn the power onto the computer. So we can see. Okay, so it's turned itself on again. not working the way I was expecting it to. I would have thought that the... Uh, no, it's, it's done what it did last time, which is fire up the chip, but didn't actually fire up the processor in the process that I was looking at. So. Well, continuation of this project on this uh, Dell E520 uh, dimension. So after doing a little bit more of a thorough research on the internet, um, due to the BIOS, which is 2.4, possibly the fastest running processor that uh, could run inside uh, this particular computer, is the, uh, the Intel Core 2 Quad Q6700. Uh, and in theory, this actually is supported by the BIOS. And, and as a result of which the, uh, the actual motherboard itself should boot. So unlike the two other processors, which just basically uh, caused the actual PC to start running, um, but didn't actually go into any post process, uh, then uh, they obviously didn't work. So um, this is my last attempt. I'm not gonna try any more processors on this uh, and stick with the uh, Pentium D uh, if this is the case. So with luck, um, you'll see uh, this, uh, this chip uh, going to be installed. So let me just back out a little bit of the actual setup. Here's the uh, chip. Uh, 
I believe it was actually launched in, two, uh, in 20, uh, 2007 actually. So, so here's the, uh, the chip itself. Uh, right, well, that's unintelligible to actually read at this distance. But it says it's uh, a Core 2 Duo. So let's, uh, let's put it in and see what actually happens and if it actually fires up and works with this one. Uh, looks okay underneath, don't see any damage under it. So here's hoping it works. Well, result. Um, put it in the first time around and it didn't recognize it and it didn't boot, but um, this time I just wiggled it uh, on its seating a little bit better and I've gone into the bias setting and you can see here that we've uh, we've got the uh, the Intel core quad core it's the Q6700 uh, running at uh, 2.66 gigahertz um, it's got uh, level 2 caching at 8 meg its bus speed is uh, uh, 1066 megahertz uh, so everything looks as though it's okay so at the moment um, these are my banks of uh, of memory so I got four gig in there running at um, uh, 667 megahertz and it's DDR2 memory uh, and the rest is all pretty straightforward so um, I hope that uh, this will now boot into uh, what I would like to see, which is, uh, a, you know, I've got Ubuntu running at the moment, so let's, uh, let's exit this one, uh, exit the setup, let's let it go into Ubuntu. Assuming that it will get through the boot process. see what it says when I bring up okay let's uh, use Ubuntu system monitor to see uh, if it has actually detected uh, the processors great so you can see we've got uh, all four cores running uh, and uh, that means that uh, this upgrade has been successful so for those of you who've got a Dell E520 and have been considering upgrading it, I can guarantee that the uh, the Q6700 processor chip using the BIOS 2.40 uh, with the Dell is a, is a setup that you can use. So um, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. For those of you who've been following me, I appreciate you watching my channel. And this final screen just shows you uh, the information that I was managing to get off Ubuntu about the actual Core 2 uh, quad uh, and some of the functions of it. Thanks YouTube. Have a great one. Bye for now.